Rugby league is a business. It is these days. We're in the professional game. We have two clubs in the Brisbane and Melbourne who are owned by the biggest media companies in the world. We have other clubs that are privately owned, the Nathan Tinklers and the Russell Crows and private benefactors that these teams have. We have other clubs that really rely on the support of very wealthy and well-heeled individuals. And I can talk of the Cowboys, the Roosters, the Bulldogs, Parramatta and other clubs there who are able to source all sorts of money for third-party arrangements and assistance to their club on financial and third-party payments. These things have not been available to Penrith at all. And in fact, when I came into this club last year, we had zero dollars in our salary cap in third-party payments, the least of any team in the NRL. The reality of our business is that it loses $4 million a year. In rough terms, it costs us $14 million, our rugby league program. We bring in $10 million. The club pays the other $4 million. Without this club subsidising that, the football program wouldn't exist. And this club has been under tremendous financial stress over the last 10 years to keep supplementing that income. At $14 million, we spend less than probably 14 or 15 of the NRL clubs in the competition. Most of the Sydney clubs are spending anywhere between 16, 18, 19 million dollars, the bigger clubs towards 20, and of course the Broncos and the Melbourne Storm, far more than that. So it's not a level playing field in that respect. What we need to do, and we don't know the future of the club industry, we don't know the future generations will come to the clubs and gamble on gaming machines and support clubs as the way we did when we grow up and as you do now. We don't know what the next generations will be, so we need to get very smart about the financial models that we have. One of the challenges that we have right now with our grandstand and our seating options is the halfway component is full. So the best seats in the house are sold out to members. Um, the western grandstand, the eastern grandstand, right down that halfway line, when someone comes into the game and they haven't been part of Panthers before and they want to buy a ticket, well, they've got to sit on the edges. This poses one of our financial challenges because the seats that we've got that are sold through to season ticket holders at the moment aren't driving the revenue that we need it to drive to actually start to achieve some of the goals that we need financially. And a key component of that is also is the way that we've sold our family tickets. The way that we've sold our family tickets over the last eight years has been structured in a format that hasn't given us what we need to deliver. As we rolled in three, four years ago into, you know, membership is a season ticket holder and this is, you know, what we're going to do and the clam was up there to, to be in the race and get as many as we can. Family tickets was a big strategy of ours that we ran through. And so we're getting everybody, buy a family ticket, buy a family ticket. That was the sales structure that we had. However, what had resulted from that unknowingly at the time is we weren't actually getting four people coming to the game. We were getting less than that. People were doing the right things and getting a family ticket but it wasn't actually a family half the time buying it. Out of our grandstand season ticket holders right now, 63% is occupied by families, yet I've only got 10 to 15% of actually kids turning up. The numbers don't, don't marry up. This picture up on the screen now is five minutes before kickoff this year at the West Tigers game, our highest ranking crowd that we've had this year. And you'll see on the grandstand there, the red seats five minutes before kickoff are empty. That grandstand was sold out the day before kickoff, so you couldn't buy a seat into that grandstand. A membership for one adult is $300, a family ticket is $620. Two guys have been buying two tickets but getting a family, and for $20, there's two empty seats in my grandstand. There's two empty seats that generally have got a beer or a place, or they try to sneak someone in but they're the best seats in the house and they're being empty and we've got to find a way to, to alleviate that and move that forward. What has happened in the flip side is as people rock up and they come and they want to go and they say, cool, I want to get the best seats in the house, well, oh, sorry, they're not available. All right, well, you know what, I'll get the cheapest seats in the house and actually sit in the best spot. So these areas which are general admission are full. Five minutes before kickoff, they've rocked up, they've paid the $22, they've got better seats than the $32 that was up in the grandstand. This financially, as it has rolled from game to game to game, has held us back and has also meant that our crowds haven't been able to lift. We've had great lift in our season ticket numbers. As we've just said, we got to 5,500 up from 1,900 a few years ago. 
However, our crowd figures have stayed exactly the same. So we've just moved ticket sales through to membership sales and season tickets, and it hasn't delivered us what we need to deliver. So this is why we're here, to so have a look at what we need to do to start to address some of this. As a reaction, we rolled out a mid-season membership. And a mid-season membership I knew for a lot of years was like, what was that all about? Our general admission areas were empty, excluding the best seats. So up in the hills was very empty. And out of the 12,000 uh, seats that we've got or spots that we've got in the stadium for general admission, we had 400 sold in membership. So it was not selling. It was not selling at all and was not giving us any returns and was giving us quite an empty option. So we aggressively went out there and tried to fill it with Panther supporters with a $50 campaign. And it was only for general admission. The membership mid-season offerings did not affect any of the reserve seating area and didn't affect the black hole. And so the idea there was to get them in the door so we can show them how good our product is for this year. Next year, I'm pleased to announce that our mid-season campaign is looking at, at $100 general admission and we will roll that in later in the season and we'll confirm that early so that everybody's aware of that strategy because I knew we only get one chance to do that. We were able to grow our membership by another 600 on the back of that $50 membership program. So it was something that we needed to do and hopefully we're able to convert those people to stay with us and hopefully those who are passionate about the club understand why we did that at the time. So this now brings me to a bit of a proposal in reviewing our seating strategy and addressing some of those issues so that we can see what is the right model for Panthers and what is going to be the model that's going to give us the most benefit. Currently, as we have it, we have a grandstand, terrace, black hole, general admission structure. And in those bays, 12 to 15, 20 to 22, those general admission areas, game after game, are full and they're the cheaper seats that are in there. In our proposal, we're looking at renaming the grandstand as to Category 1 seating. It's just a name change, but the importance on that name change is that it's Category 1. These are the best seats. As you rock up and you want the best seats, I want to sit in Category 1. It's a pretty simple change, but the name change will mean a lot, especially as it starts to go to the other categories. Category 2 seating is where we're looking at having the entire Western Terrace as Category 2 and Bay 6 at the Black Hole as Category 2 reserve seating. That will mean that Category 3 seating is the remainder of the general admission and the Bay 7 component of the black hole. This is quite a poignant no moment for me because I look at this and now I have reduced the availability of the general admission seating. But what I have done is improved what you get when you get a terrace seat and the option for a reserve seating. So I'll, I'll be very interested to get a lot of your feedback over the next few weeks as we look at this proposal. In regards to the black hole itself, the black hole's been a, been a unique beast for us and, uh, and for those black hole guys that are, that are here, I'm more than happy to have, have plenty of chats afterwards and, uh, and get your feedback in it because it's been our biggest growth membership section that we've been able to have over the last two, three years. And it's actually been feedback from the black hole that you guys have come back and saying that you guys want to have a look at a reserved seat section. The way that seats have been ad hoc reserved through jackets and stickers on seats and those sort of things, the unknowing of who you're going to sit next to and those components are what you guys have, have come to me and said, look, let's have a look at it, changing it. However, I don't want to take anything away from the black hole members either. So that's why I've looked at this proposal, really thought about it, thought that if Bay 7 is still Category 3 and Bay 6 is reserved seating, then I'm hoping that no black hole person is is losing in any way and everybody gets the game. And you get to pick whether you want a reserve seat or whether you want to just have as you like in Bay 7. Which leads us to the pricing strategy, which I'm, I'm sure everybody's sort of, you know, about to think, oh, what's, what's going to go on here? And I suppose what is important for us with that pricing strategy, there's one bit that I really need your feedback with and that's the family tickets. We haven't put a price up for our family tickets there because I'm looking for your feedback and as we went to the board and it was fantastic to get that feedback from the board to go back and say, let's ask the members, let's ask them for their thoughts. So it's really important tonight that you get a chance to fill in those forms, let us know, we're going to collate that, we're going to present that report through to the board who represent you guys and we'll let you know of all the details that have come out of this and we'll also put that all up online. 
So what's being handed out now is our proposed price strategy. On one side, you'll see our 2012 prices and what we have presented as a proposed 2013 prices, which is a cleaner structure that highlights the difference between category one, two, and three. From the adult ticket, a 150, a 250, a 350, very clean price points that ensure that what you get is what you'll, what you'll seat it in. And as you can see, the family's there at TBC. One that is a, a significant restructure there is the difference between our concession and our juniors. We have had some serious issues with how we've structured that with concession people being part of family tickets and concession and the difference between when a junior turns into an 18 year old adult turning into a concession and breaking that. So that's a change that we've had a look at that needs to be made as well. On the other side there, you'll actually see the comparison with the other clubs. The clubs we picked are clubs with similar stadiums and similar demographics and, uh, and out west as well. So I just really wanted to put that up there to put in perspective as to the changes that we're looking at, how that actually ranks in regards to the other clubs who are in a similar situation and where our price model currently stands. Where we were with family tickets in the grandstand at $620 was definitely holding us back. On a good note, on a really good note, on something I'm really excited to, to hear from you and to look at moving forward is a loyalty program. It has taken us a lot of time at the back end to go back and research our data and fix our data to actually find out who's been here for more than five years. It sounds pretty simple, but it's been something that's been quite intensive. But what I'd like to do through the course of uh, tonight and moving forward is hear from you guys as to what you would like to receive uh, as a loyalty item, to say that you've been a, a season ticket holder with us for five, 10 and 20 years. From there, from that feedback, we'll go back, see what we can achieve in the budget and see what we can achieve from a loyalty program. That feedback has come through from you guys. That's something I'm very passionate about and that's something I'm really glad you know, to, to be able to say we're definitely looking at. And for us, the focus on season tickets is about service. We know that the underlying, regardless of all this, the most important thing for us to do is raise the level of service, raise the ability for us to deliver for you guys and get there. So we are working so close with the front here. Um, myself and Phil Barber and the, the rest of the membership team, we're now based over this side of the road with every intention that September 1st, when you walk in and pay for your season ticket, I'll give you your season ticket and I'll give you your season ticket cap right there on the spot. No having to wait till February, no having to, to say that I've got nothing to put under the Christmas tree. That is a really important component. And for us, that focus is primary. So there are a billion different things and billions of different ideas that you guys will come and, and how about we do this and how about we do that. And for us, the number one focus is to get that one right. 